Uh, footy kits. Got half cause divide duty. And today's no different. Um, Liverpool have just announced their new home strip for the 21 22 season. And it's safe to say that yet again it has caused uh, a bit of divide. Uh, some people love it, some people don't like it. It's just a matter of opinion, really, isn't it? Um, but we're going to get into it in this video. Just a, just a quick video, just to discuss it, really. Um, so, yeah, so uh, new kits come out. Nike's second kit. Um, it's different. I'm not going to say I'm overly joyed with it because I'm really, really not. Um, but it is different, and I think that's a plus sign. And I'm going to explain what I mean by that in a minute. I can understand why there's a lot of people that don't like it because I'm, pro I'm probably more in that camp than I'm in the like it camp. When I saw it a month ago or two months ago, whenever it was when the images leaked, I wasn't a big fan. I, I didn't like the, the colour scheme in terms of adding the orange in there or the crimson as they put it in the marketing. I just, it didn't flow for me. It, it didn't look like a normal traditional Liverpool kit. Um, and traditional is a word I'm going to use quite often in this video. Um, it just didn't feel right to me. I didn't look at that and go, yes, that's a Liverpool home shirt. Um, so I, for me, it just, it, it's not grabbed me. Um, after seeing it uh, for the release, I'm a little bit more warm into it in terms of how it looks on the players. I do think it looks a lot better on. And I think we'll appreciate it more when we see it in action on Sunday uh, against Palace. Um, but again, it depends on how, how, you, how you think of football kits. You might be someone who, who buys the kit every year regardless, or you might be someone who only buys a shirt once in a blue moon, or you might be someone who just doesn't give a shit as long as the team wins and it, who cares? And that's what it's about, right? You create all these memories in these football shirts, and that's what it's down to. You know, A shirt might have come out that you don't like, but we made memories in it, and you think, well, actually, no, it's all right. And I've, I'm victim of that. Uh, there's a couple of shirts I, have, I haven't liked, but we've made memories in them, and that's, that's the main thing, really, isn't it? So why don't we look at uh, what Nike have produced for us? Okay, so we've got the kit here, and they're taking inspiration from the 1964 season. Um, now, what they mean by that is when Shankly was at the club, he decided to change the kit from being uh, white shorts and white and red socks and a red top to all red. He dressed Ron Yates in all red, and he said, Christ, son, you look like a colossal powerhouse. Um, and that's why it was all changed to all red. So I get where they're coming from with this now, um, but their marketing is um, based around that. And I quote from saying, red is for danger and red is for power. Um, but it's inspired by that decision as well. So they'll be walking out on the pitch with a full red kit detailed with bolted pinstripes. This outfit is too matchy-matchy as it is. And so I was just trying to break it up with some simple horizontal lines and bright crimson sleeve cuffs and neckline representing power, energy and danger in 21-22. With deep-rooted club history meeting contemporary style, the jersey is completed with a fossil-coloured swoosh and crest and nod to journeys of the 90s. Woohoo! I can be a little boy again! The green neck tape features a thread of stripes which are ever-present in the home collection. The final touch is the fresh new look from Standard Chartered. Bold, vibrant and digital friendly, the brand is fit for a new era. Yeah, you know, marketing, fair play, you know, it, it, it sounds very ooh and ah, but I, I don't think it's going to wash with a lot of people. Uh, my personal fears on the 64 reference, um, they tried to cater for both sides of the argument here. There's a lot of people that wanted something fresh and something new, and there's a lot of people who want to continue with the, the tradition of looking back at an old shirt. Um, and I don't think that this one does that, but this is what you've got to think about is, what are the shirts going to look like in 20 years? What are the shirts are going to look like in 30 years? What are the shirts are going to look like in 50 years? They, If we're going to continue going down this traditional route of looking back at old shirts, the, those guys in 30, 40, 50 years are going to need something to look back on. And why not this? The contemporary style fits in with what's happening right now in fashion. And that's, at the end of the day, that's what it, it boils down to as well, is who's going to buy it? Now, we all know that a lot of children will buy the shirt regardless. They'll want the full kit. Mum, I want it for Christmas. Mum, I want it for my birthday. Dad, get it for my birthday. Dad, get it for me for Christmas. It, that's what it's going to be like. And the majority of, they're still going to buy it. Yeah, so they're going to shell out hundreds of pounds for three or four kits for the kids. Um, maybe one for themselves, you never know. But that's who's going to be buying it. Um, I don't think the older generation sort of buys kits anymore, especially the shirts. Um, I don't think that happens. Me personally, it's not one that I'm going to add to my collection. I don't add shirts to my collection just for the sake of that's the one I'm missing. I only add it if one, it brings back memories or two, I actually really like the look of the shirt. Um, so yeah, so that's where I stand on on that bit and that's where I think the demographics aiming for. It is aiming at that contemporary style. 
Um, so it's not going to appeal to everybody because they have to do something new. And why not? We're in that generation now of football's changed massively. You've got to start to try and do something new. And I, I like new stuff, I do, but I'm a very traditional person. And I do like to look at back at, at old stuff, which we're going to look at right now. Okay, so what we've got here, we've got a collection of the home shirts that have been uh, through the Premier League here. There's not every uh, home shirt here from the Premier League here, it's just uh, a collection that I've got. Um, but obviously, I just want to talk about a few things in terms of tradition and stuff like that, and why Nike have probably made the decision to move away from anything like that. Um, obviously, this was the first um, shirt that we had in the Premier League. It's actually this, a different version of the one we had previously in the old Division 1, just the sponsor had changed. But fashion is very subjective um, and it did go away from the whole ball just just red colour and as you can see we've got the three adidas stripes there which is very popular during that time the likes of Bayern Munich and Marseille had that design as well um, so it was sort of like we'll bring that continental feel over and that's what adidas did and it was under the banner of their adidas equipment brand and um, but then incorporating that then for the three stripes here this was went completely different um, and obviously this 93-95 one is essence to the one from last season as well uh, with this as well, they added the Hillsborough Flames on there as well um, to incorporate, which I thought was a really, really good idea at the time. But I really, really like this jersey. I think uh, jersey shirt, whichever one you want to call it. Uh, came from our American friends. Um, yeah, this shirt it reminds me of Robbie Fowler. I'm sure that's what it reminds you of you guys. Obviously, FA Cup win in this one, Coca-Cola Cup win with Stephen Manaman. There's loads of stuff that you can go on with this, which is, is a really, really good shirt for that. Um, and the reason why I'm talking about these, well, cause I'm, again, I'm talking about the tradition, with this one as well, obviously, there's quite a lot of memories there from Stan Collymore. Um, but the V-neck here was, was synonymous with what happened in the 80s as well, because uh, we had quite a lot of V-necks there, a lot part of the 70s into the 80s. And you notice the yellow piping on here as well, which is going to incorporate the old third kits that we used to have with, with the yellow. Um, and sometimes uh, we that would be our, our second one. And I've always said that we should always have either a white or a yellow away kit. You can do what you want with the third one, mess around with that as much as you want. But as long as we've got a white one or a yellow one, I'd be happy because that's our tradition. Um, or in a crew one, you never know what happens there. Ah, oh, shit. Here we go again. Um, and then that was the last year that Adidas actually had the contract with Liverpool. And here you've got the, the beginning of the Reebok style. And then they went back to the oval badge, which they had in the 60s. So obviously that again was harking back to the tradition as well. Um, and this is a time when football shirts from this point on started like for, for two years. And then obviously you've got here the 98 shirt, um, which again is very synonymous with those early years of the 60s of the 70s before it started changing to V-neck. And this one was hark back in that tradition as well. And from the marketing for that shirt as well, you saw that quite often. That was whenever you had advertisements for these shirts, it, it was always a reminisce of, of times gone by. Um, again, 2001 was again was a fresh idea. Now it wouldn't surprise me in 10 to 15 years, 20 years, 25 years that we see something similar to this, um, because this was an iconic season for us, and it it goes on in tradition, doesn't it? You know, Istanbul's a famous shirt. Now, didn't really like that shirt at the time when it first came out, but we won the FA Cup in it and we won the Champions League in it, so it's great memories. Um, this one, all right, yeah, we didn't win anything in it. We got to to Athens in it, and. Uh, Fernando Torres' his first shirt, so again, it, it's good memories like that. But then, when you come to the 17-18 shirt, which is obviously very, very popular among Liverpool fans, and for me, it was the best shirt that New Balance did um, in terms of the overall look of it. Again, it harked back to Phoenix, and it harked back to our old tradition. Um, I wasn't a fan of the 18-19 shirt, mainly because I, it just didn't look right for me. Uh, but we, we went to Madrid in that and uh, we won the Champions League here. So it's, it's got good memories. So I had to add it to the collection. Um, and then obviously you've got um, the, the Bob Paisley inspired shirt from, from the 80s. Um, again, I, when this came out, I loved it. Absolutely loved it. And a lot of people didn't, but I was, I was a big, big fan of it. And again, we won the league in it. But then you can see going backwards in time where the shirts get. And I'll do a proper video on all this sort of stuff. It's just to cover this, but... Like I said, when you when you get a, a a match like that in terms of the green on this on the sleeves on the cuffs and stuff like that, that's the way a lot of manufacturers want to go down that route now. Um, but again, you know, it, it's not a bad thing that Nike have gone down a completely different route now, where they have got um, the, the the crimson or the orange on the it, it's orange isn't it at the end of the day, where the orange on the neck and the the orange on the sleeves and then the the, the horizontal lines on there as well. Um, it's different and. Don't get any massive tears about it, um, because 
if we make some great memories in it, it really, really doesn't matter at the end of the day. Um, but again, if you don't like it, don't buy it. You know, that's, that's the be all and end all of it. I personally won't be buying this home shirt. Um, I just, it's not a bit of me. Um, these are a bit of me. Um, I, I do really like every shirt that I've got. Um, and I, I, I think you've got to do that if you want if you want to buy a football shirt. You just get it if you like it. But, you know, if, if you, everyone's entitled to the opinion on a footy shirt, of course they are. Um, but if you like it, get it. If not, don't worry about it. Um, as long as we uh, we win things in it, that's the main thing uh, anyway, isn't it? So, yeah, so that was just a little video on, on our thoughts of the new night shirt. Um, yeah, take it or leave it at the end of the day. It's all about the away shirt for me this season, if that happens. Still hoping, still praying those rumours are true. And if that happens, I'll do another uh, video on that as well. So uh, I'll be quite excited for that. But yeah, let us know your thoughts in the comments. Um, do you like the shirt? How would you rate it out of 10? Um, what's your favourite home shirt ever? Uh, but thank you for watching this video. Uh, like I said, um, you know, let's just see what happens with uh, with the away kit. And uh, yeah, let me know your thoughts in the comments, what you think about this one. Rate it out of 10. Let us know what you think. Um, please subscribe to the channel if you're just passing through. We really, really appreciate it. And yeah, uh, see you soon.